Hello everyone, today in this video I am going to talk about how I transitioned from an average to expert embedded system engineer. As a beginner embedded system engineer, I struggled a lot finding resources, proper guidance and a clear roadmap. Honestly, the projects I worked in the beginning either suffered from performance issues or some of them never worked. My final year project, I remember how I made it work a day before the final presentation. Fast forward to today, 2025, I'm working as an embedded system firmware developer at Greater Water Systems in Ontario, Canada. Here, I am involved in the architecture design of the products, contributing independently, adding new features to the firmware, and optimizing existing ones. How I transitioned from an average to expert firmware developer? Let's look into that. I enrolled in post-graduation in Embedded Systems from Conestoga College back in 2016. During this program, I got a chance to work with very experienced persons and professors. I worked with an ex-employee of BlackBerry and he was my mentor in the final year project. My final year project was very close to a product having a acceptable performance. So now you can see with the proper guidance and the hands-on practice, I transitioned myself from an average engineer to an expert engineer. We are going to look into three sections today. Number one, basics. Number two, advanced topics. And number three, projects. In the embedded system, you should know the C programming really well now why c programming because c programming gives direct access to the hardware and in the embedded system as we are working on hardware and software together so we need the direct access so c programming is best choice for embedded system you should be learning the following topics the data types data types are really important in c because data type decide how much memory we are going to allocate and what will be the range of a particular variable pointers really helpful and sometimes considered hard to understand but with practice this will be easier for you to work with pointers storage classes there are some storage classes help to manage the scope and the storage of any variable next is arrays most used data structure in embedded system make sure you check the boundaries when you're accessing the arrays queues queues offers first in first out mechanism we use queues a lot in embedded system in order to make the design loosely coupled stacks stacks offered first in last out macros macros are really important they are pre-processed and we use macros for some hard-coded values also we use macros when you are compiling your code for different architectures or different controllers functions we use function to make our code modular and functions are mostly used in embedded c make sure you learn about inline functions as well passing arguments to functions so we need to pass arguments so there are two ways either we pass by value or we pass by reference parameter validation when you are passing values to functions make sure you validate before using for example if you are passing a pointer and that pointer is null and if you try to use that pointer the program will crash structure highly used in embedded systems to manage and group the different data types together make sure you understand how structure allocate the memory there's a union as well which help us to save memory in some scenarios so these are the basics you need to make sure you understand all these concepts in c that will help you in embedded systems now let's look at the second point peripherals the important peripherals you should know as an embedded system engineer so first thing enabling clock so you should be able to enable clock and choose a particular source either internal clock or external gpio general purpose input output to control outputs and also read the inputs back timers 
very useful in an embedded system to schedule your different events on a particular time. Counters, we need to sometime count the incoming pulses and also figure out the frequency of input signal. PWM, PWM is used to control the motor speed or other application in embedded system. So pulse width modulation. So we vary the width of a pulse. UART communication. UART is very important peripheral and is used for onboard or sometimes long distance communication as well. When you are using UART on long distance, the signal may get degraded. So we use RS-485. RS-485 support long distance communication. I2C to interface different sensors based on their address. So we can have multiple sensors on single bus. SPI used for external flash or other sensors as well. We can have multiple on same bus, but we need a chip select for each one. So it depends how many sensors you want to connect on a single bus. You need to have same number of chip select lines. Interrupt in the embedded system, we get so many events triggered from outside world. So we use interrupt to service them as soon as possible. Watchdog, sometime designing the code can end up into a infinite loop. So watchdog is a hardware timer help the code to exit from infinite loops. Let's look at the microcontrollers. There is 8051, STM32, PIC24, ESP32, NRF52. They offer different functionalities and they offer different peripherals. We need to pick one and get used to it and then it's easy to learn the second one afterwards. Now let's look at the advanced. I would recommend learning Python language because the embedded system is now utilizing Python to optimize the workflow in today's development environment. As a beginner, start learning Python. Python is very useful when you want to automate your workflow. For example, the testing in the embedded system. Visual interpretation is sometimes not feasible when you are getting logs in thousands of the line. You can use a Python script to monitor the logs. Unit testing is another framework which is available in Python can be used to test the devices and Python is widely used in the industry for these applications. So I would recommend start learning as soon as possible. Wireless communication. So when you have your basics strong, you should be working on projects like Bluetooth communication and then Wi-Fi communication. For Bluetooth communication, you can use NRF52. They have good support, good development kits, a well-documented software development kit SDKs. For Wi-Fi, you can use ESP32, a commonly used module. There are plenty of resources available for ESP32 as well. Data communication protocol, Modbus, very important protocol and widely used in the industry. You are going to find so many sensors available. They support the Modbus. If you want to integrate external sensors into your system, which of course you will do when you will be working on big projects in the industry and you need to know how to use Modbus and how to implement the Modbus as well. Next, when we talk about Internet of Things, you need to know the protocols used for communication over the Internet. So first one is HTTP, which is widely used and we communicate data to and from the cloud. And then the second one is the MQTT, which is also widely used in the space of Internet of Things. Let's look at the third point, which is the project. I have compiled a list of 16 projects you should be working on other than the basics. When you completed the basics, you can start working on those projects as well. 
I will be putting down the link. You can download that PDF as a guide. I hope this roadmap helps you to start your journey as an embedded system engineer. Please share your feedback in the comment section, like this video and to watch more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video.